Hello, I'm Callie Carlin, and this is World Watch, your quick review of news around the globe. We start in Afghanistan, where the United Nations will relocate more than half its staff after last week's deadly Taliban attack aimed at UN workers. Clearly, uh, there is a need for the United Nations to look at uh, the safety and the welfare of UN personnel serving here in Afghanistan. The UN stresses that this is not a pullout or a scale down and that they will return once better security measures are put in place. In Nepal, former rebels continue to demonstrate the protesters are members of the Communist Party of Nepal, commonly called Maoists. They're mad at the current president because he did not uphold a decision by the previous Maoist-led government to fire the army chief. Maoists accused the army chief of not allowing the former rebel fighters to integrate in the national army, which was a key part of the peace deal made three years ago in which the rebels agreed to lay down their arms. In response to the current outrage from the former rebels, the government has increased security and mobilized thousands of policemen in riot gear. Meanwhile, in the Gulf of Aden, Turkish commandos captured five pirates attacking a cargo vessel. A Turkish army website says that they received a help call from a Greek-owned ship. Turkey deployed a warship to the area almost a year ago in an effort to quell attacks from Somali pirates. Finally, Japan's Prime Minister, Yukio Hariyama, celebrated along with Yankee fans this week as they clinched the World Series and Japanese slugger Hideki Matsui was crowned MVP. The Prime Minister says sports players can be great foreign envoys and that this brings Japan closer to America. For more on all those stories, head to cbsnews.com slash worldwatch. In New York, I'm Callie Carlin.